Um, I think the confidence comes from, um, the, Kyle always talks about it, it takes 11 guys to run the football. And he's, he, he, it, it, it's coaching receivers and tight ends and fullbacks and ha even running backs at times because they, they've gone out to you know, be the fullback for a receiver that's carrying the ball for us. And it's, it's, obviously it starts at the five of us up front, extends to Kittle, extends to Juice, but it's those five to 10 yard gains that we've been getting and that turn into explosives like 20 yards, 30 yards or touchdowns because of the skill guys that we have that are willing to put their hat into places that most receivers don't go. And I think that, um, that's something that Kyle takes them on. And when you see guys, the way that R11, you know, go after people and get after the ball and run the ball, um, it puts in confidence every week that you put it on tape because you get more and more confident in yourself, more confident in your teammates, and more confident in your coaching staff to scheme it up the right way. Do you embrace the, the fact that now, because of how good you guys played in that area, that, I mean, there's a bullseye. It's like, hey, if we can stop the 49ers run game, that's a pretty huge con. I guess it, I guess it's a bullseye in a way, but we I think if it's it, other teams aren't the media and they've also watched every single game that we've gone on this year and understand that we, we aren't just a run one dimensional football team. We have a quarterback that can really sling it. We have receivers that can make and and you know argue I, you know the other ones on the on the other sideline, but arguably the best tight end in football on our side too. And it, 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 we have guys all over the place that makes it really hard for teams to just focus on just stopping the run because we've proven time and time again that we can get after it in the past game too. Mike, have you ever experienced a moment of being starstruck, particularly now that you're at the Super Bowl surrounded by celebrities? Um, I haven't met any celebrities this week. I've been being pretty, you know, uh, cooped up in my room trying to study and get all that stuff going. But uh, I was a junior I, and I went on a recruiting trip to Duke. Um, when I was a junior year in high school, and um, it was when Peyton Manning was doing his rehab down there. And so I got to sit at a dinner table with Peyton Manning, and I remember being pretty starstruck then as a 16, 17 year old kid with one of the greatest to ever do it. And um, the first, actually, our first Niners event last year, it was called the State of the Union event, and they brought Jerry Rice in to model the uniform that was a 94 uniform and he wore it and all that and he sat in the green room with us while we were waiting to go out and I was like oh my god you know I'm sitting next to Jerry Rice and that was kind of a, a wow moment of getting into the NFL and being around this type of people um, so that those two moments I think are the most starstruck I've ever been I, I tried to play it cool and have I was able to have conversations with both but uh, I was freaking out on the inside for sure are there any non-athletes that would do it for you non-athletes um yeah, I'd probably be pretty starstruck if I met like Matthew McConaughey or uh, Leo DiCaprio or something like one of those guys that have been like Hall of Fame actors for forever, and I've watched every movie that they've ever been in. But yeah, McConaughey would be pretty cool. Yeah. Hi, Mike. Hey. Uh, this is your second year in the NFL. Yep. First one is four twelve. Yep. Now thirteen and three, and you're going to the Super Bowl. What are your feelings about this? I feel great about it. You know, it, it, last year was tough with being four and twelve, but it was also a time that we knew that we weren't in a in a bad position. Even though the record was bad, we felt like we were close and we could have some opportunities to win games coming down the stretch. And the the pieces that we put into place this season kind of came to fruition by the record that we have now. It, we kind of showed this year how close we were last year that we just needed a couple more tweaks here and there. And it's kind of turned into this great thing that we're, you know, we're sitting here at the Super Bowl. So um, it's a crazy feeling. It's an awesome feeling. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I consider myself, I mean, obviously so lucky. I'm only in my second year and I'm at the Super Bowl for the first time. And um, I know guys that have played, you know, 15, 16 years that have never even sniffed it. And um, that's, a, that's something to be cherished and something to be very, very proud of. But, um, you know, you got to make your most of the opportunity that's, that's in front of us this Sunday and make sure we go, I go one, and one for one and not 0-1-1. Uh, is it true that Matt Ryan is your cousin? He is, yep. Yeah, he's my older cousin. He's my older cousin, yep. Did he give you any advice about the Super Bowl? Yeah, he did. Um, obviously, we play very different positions, so it's more logistical stuff, like take, how, how to take care of certain situations, like where, you know, how tickets are, are, are being given out or um, how to focus this week or how, where, to, where to put my mind at certain times. And Matt's always done that for me. Um, my entire life, not just it didn't just take the Super Bowl for Matt to do that. He's been doing that since I was a 10 year old kid. So him and his him and his dad and his brothers have been a huge part of my fa uh, my family, obviously, but my personal career because of they laid, they kind of laid the blueprint for me, and uh, it's been pretty cool. You've been running the football very effectively all season long. How did you build up this style of football? One, I think it starts with a great scheme from our head coach and, uh, and Mike McDaniel and Mike LaFleur and the guys that scheme it up for us. And we have 11 guys that really love 
that really take the opportunities to love and love running the football. Um, we got skill guys that take pride in getting their head in and cracking on linebackers and, and getting downfield and accounting for middle third safeties and, um, and 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 obviously the offensive line. It's our job. It's always in our job description to be doing that. And but we have, you know, the coolest thing about it for me is we got a, a tight end that set the record last year and with 1,500 yards in a single season that takes more pride in blocking for the run than he does catching footballs. We got a fullback that does whatever he's asked to do. We have receivers that are show t- that can make huge plays in the pass game, but some of their most impactful stuff has been in the run game this year for sure. Why do you think uh, people have such a tough time calling this game, making a prediction on this game? Why, why do you uh, um, well, because well, I don't think there's been a, you know, it's been kind of a unique matchup in a way of, of how we do things and how they do things. And um, I think that they have a, people see both sides, and it, it, they're they're so talented on at the Chiefs roster, both offensively and their defense doesn't get enough uh, enough credit for what they've done, especially in the back half of the year. They've they've become a new team, and they've done a lot of stuff to really really step up and play great football. And their offense obviously speaks for itself. They got the reigning MVP. They got weapons everywhere, and it makes it makes it really hard for teams to have success against them. But for us, you know, we kind of have like a different little. We we can kind of come at you in so many different ways that it makes it really hard that if one game. If a game goes this way, we kind of have an answer for it. And if a game goes that way, they have an answer for it. So it kind of makes it really hard for the media pundits out there to uh, make predictions on it because I, I think it is such a versatile and different matchup. And it comes down to what? It comes down to who can focus in on their task and after studying for two weeks. It comes down to who can manage all the different distractions that come down this week. I mean, the, you know, it, it, it's football. But this week presents a lot more challenges than, than normal off the field stuff that people like if you're not a pro about it, it can really get in your way. Fortunately, I think for us, we know I know we have a lot of pros. I know we have a lot of help from the, up, uh, the upper management and the staff and everybody taking pride in into being coachable in those types of situations and understanding the severity of, of the moment that's in front of us and not letting things get in the way. And I know they do, too. I watched Andy Reid for, you know, 15 years in my hometown of Philadelphia, and he, he had teams running all, all the way through. He's I mean, he's been to the playoffs, I think more than a third of his career as a head coach and they know how to do things the right way too so um, it's a matter of who's better at coming back to task who's better at managing the distraction and executing when it comes down to it on Sunday and I think that's who's going to decide the game.